Hi, I thought I would talk to you about what you see right in front of you, or I hopefully I can make this side by side, because what I have here is my Bagrarium's Blooming Color 1000 Piece Round Puzzle. Now, I am going to show you at the end of this, where I'm talking to you directly, portion of this video, some pictures that I took as I was working on the puzzle itself. I am thinking and rethinking how much jigsaw puzzle things I want to do on this channel and because I haven't fully made up my mind I wasn't taking presentation type photos I just if I was talking to somebody on a Facebook group or on messenger about the puzzle I would take a picture and send it or when I was talking to my friend on the phone she says let me see what you're working on I took a picture and I sent it so I have put those pictures into a folder on my iPad and I'm going to show them kind of in slideshow format at the end of this uh, this portion of the video. So, since I hadn't planned on doing anything with this puzzle on this channel, what am I doing here right now? Well, this Bagrarium Jigsaw puzzle confused me, okay? Now, I'm going to show you, this is the box, it's blooming color, 1,000 pieces, and it's my very first Bagrarium's jigsaw puzzle, but it's also my very first round jigsaw puzzle. Here it says that it is 26 by 26.6 by 26.6 inches wide. With that being the width, it seemed uh, the circumference, it seemed that it would work on my bits and pieces swivel, deluxe swivel easel board. I think I put all that in the right order. But as you're going to see in the pictures, when I started the puzzle, especially when I didn't have any of the interior pieces beyond the border done, it was a fairly good circle. But once I started to move into the second row, and especially once I started getting pieces that matched in the third row, it started to become more of an oblong shape. And then if I, let's say, got a bunch of pieces done in an area like over here, then the shape would start, the puzzle would start to fall apart over here. So I would put those pieces in here and then I would go over here and I would put those, I would fix that area that, that uh, it like bunched up, it like gathered up. I'd fix that area, and as soon as I fixed that area, this area over here would buckle up, and then I would fix that, and as I was fixing that, then this area, but I, I kept doing it for two whole days, you know, barring naps and barring going to bed at night. For two days, I continued to put in pieces and fix pieces, put in pieces and fix pieces, but I wasn't giving up because stick to is part of my being. I'm a very stubborn person. By the way, you may notice that it's missing a piece. I just need to bring that up. So, I'm running into these problems. I am at the halfway point, and I considered myself very, very much at the halfway point when the center section finally connected with the outer section at a certain point. When I was able to see a full line, almost like half of a pizza pie or half of a cake, I knew that I was going to stick with this puzzle no matter how hard it was. So what I did is I took a chunk, maybe about this much of it, and I separated it and I pulled it back and then I took the remainder part of the puzzle and I made that into as much, oh my cat scared me, as much of a um, cir circle as I could. That didn't work. It, it just didn't work. So. Then the next thing I thought, okay, why don't I just make it into an oblong shape because it's still round. But then once you started getting pieces in the center and you started getting pieces over here, if it's an oblong shape, then how would it, how would it come together like this? So I was babysitting, so I wasn't given the puzzle 100% of my attention, but there was enough in the back of my mind 
that made me come up with a plan. What was that plan? To take it off of the bits and pieces easel. I want to show you my tool, but I, my cat, not, oh, here it is. I wanted to take it off of my bits and pieces easel and put it on cardboard. Well, what kind of cardboard? A couple months ago on Amazon, I bought a 10 pack of 20 by 20 pieces of foam board, but I also bought four sheets of cardboard. I bought them because I figured, and this is before I bought the bits and pieces easel, if I was going to work on 1500 piece puzzles then, or white mountain puzzles, and wanted to uh, keep them together with uh, for future purposes, I would need something bigger than 20 by 30. So I bought these. I am so glad that I did. But even with this, you can see that the puzzle is not going to fit on one of these pieces of cardboard. So what did I do? Well, the next thing I did is I said, okay, I ran to my kit. I grabbed two pieces of cardboard. Then I grabbed some packing tape, went in the kitchen, laid them side by side on the floor and taped them together. Okay, getting closer to what my, my mind is germinating. And then I was limited by space because my grandkids were here. They were in the bed watching a movie. I have my card table here, which had my bits and pieces easel on it. And I had a small TV table next to it. So I folded this where it's taped in half. I've got to let my cat out the room. So, I, after I taped it together, I folded it in half and I balanced this cardboard gingerly, in a very gingerly manner, on the little TV table and took this tool, which is a puzzle spatula for lack of a better term. It's also a magnifier, like if you can't see a section or a, uh, the texture or design or something of a puzzle, you could use this as a magnifier on your puzzle to make something a little bit clearer. But what I wanted to do was to pick up sections of this puzzle and like this and move it to this board. Well, nice in theory, but not in practice. Why is that? Well, because this is a crumbly, loose jigsaw puzzle. It's interlocking right now. I can do this, but that, see, I can't really even do that because if, I don't know if you can see over there, but wasn't too happy I just did that. Hmm, okay, so that's not gonna work. So the next idea I had was, why don't I take slices out, like a, say a slice of pizza, cake, or pie, take slices out that are about the width of this and just, first I split it in half and then I took slices out and I was gonna move slice after slice onto this. Every time I put a slice onto this board from the bits and pieces easel, I would connect it to the slice that I had brought over previously. Now each and every time I did this, I would lose uh, maybe five, 10, even 15 pieces that were already puzzled would separate from those sections. So I put them to the side and I kept on doing this. Then I got to that first halfway mark and I'm like, this is working, but I didn't have enough room to complete it. So once the grandchildren were picked up, I carefully moved this cardboard over to my bed. I picked up that heavy bits and pieces board, which is 20 pounds, and I put that on my bed. And I continued to break apart and to move section by section onto this cardboard. When all was said and done, and I had most of the puzzle back to where it was before I decided to move it, I had a good 100 to 150 pieces that I had to put back into place. So I put Survivor on from uh, earlier in the evening, but I couldn't watch it at the time. I put Survivor on, and I fixed that those 100, 150 pieces. And then I was able to puzzle on. I was able to go forward. So I stayed with it for a few hours after that. I really did. I think I worked on it till 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And then I decided I better get some sleep. And I went to bed and then I got up today and I completed it, except for the fact that it's missing one piece. 
So, what is my estimation of Bagrarium's round jigsaw puzzles? I'm not afraid of round puzzles because I bought, oh, I'll show you this way. I bought this one. This is a blue kazoo uh, color wheel. I've been buying gradient puzzles, like for example, I did this one already. I have done th this one already. I was trying to show it to you upside down. Um, I just bought this Cloudberries one. So I'm looking forward to doing this, but this is not just a gradient puzzle, but it's a round puzzle. But I wanted to do this one, the one that you see right in front of me that's on the table. And that's what I did. How do I feel about it? First of all, this puzzle is not as interlocking as you would imagine. Yes, I could kind of move it a little bit on this cardboard. You cannot move it on felt. Even if you have a big enough surface that is felt, if you have anything padded, if you have anything felt, you cannot move the, these pieces. With these, you can't do it. So, crumbly, loose, difficult to move on diff different sur uh, surfaces, but once I got it on to the cardboard, the puzzle started to sing to me. I'm like, I can finish this puzzle. I can finish this puzzle. Okay, round puzzles, yes, I'm going to continue to buy round puzzles. Now, I don't understand a certain part of mathematics because this puzzle says that it's 26.6 times 26.6 inches in circumference, right? Did I read that somewhere? Let's find, let's find out. Yes, finish size 26.6 times 26.6. Then I look at this bad boy, this blue kazoo one, and it tells me that it is a 26.5 inch puzzle. I don't remember the dimensions of my bits and pieces board, but it takes up to a 1500 piece puzzle. In fact, my bits and pieces pieces board easily, sorry for that, handles white mountain puzzles. These are always larger size. You see the piece size? So these thousand piece puzzles take up the same amount of space on a puzzle board that a 1500 piece puzzle would take. So me not understanding mathematics to the, to a certain degree, didn't understand why didn't this round 1000 piece puzzle fit on that bits and pieces board. So in order for you to see what I'm saying at the end of this chat that I'm having with you now, you're going to go and, and see a bunch of pictures or images that I took while the puzzle was in progress. And it was going in progress in certain stages. From round, yay, to oval, uh, to I better separate some of it. Oh, I got to stop and fix this. I got to stop and fix that. But I kept on going until I came up with the idea to move it. So I didn't take good screenshots by no means. These are not cropped. They're just shots that I took as I progress my way through the puzzle. Will I do another Bagrariums again? Yes, I will. In fact, in fact, I do have one in my stash. This came from my sister Gail. This is not round, obviously, but it is Bagrarium. It is a gradient, and it is going to be done by me. Now, in my puzzle searching, you know, my ever growing need to buy more jigsaw puzzles will i look for more round puzzles i will but i will just work on them on say this cardboard i could have worked on this puzzle directly onto the card table itself and not a piece of cardboard but i chose the cardboard because if i wanted to work on the opposite side of the puzzle i literally just sl slid moved things away from my right and left and I just moved my cardboard around to the side or to the right and I could, with the card table that would have been too cumbersome to move the whole table and 
I did do a lot of this puzzle standing up. Like if I had a piece and I mentally remembered the colors for a certain piece were over there, I would just stand up and put them into place. So I found this to be a great challenge, an enjoyable puzzling experience, despite all of those hangups and all of those hiccups that happened while I was doing it. Why do a puzzle like this? Well, when you see this puzzle and I am going to disassemble it now and you're going to see how all of these pieces look when they're not in the right when they're not assembled you're like who would want to do that moi I love this kind of stuff I mean look at this this look at this gradient I have right here this Lego gradient I mean so I love the challenge I love the puzzle I, I think I will probably do uh, oh I know which I know what my next puzzle will be you'll just have to wait and find out but um, anyway so I'm gonna shut these cameras off and I am going to uh, set it up so that I can disassemble this puzzle thanks for watching so these are the screenshots that or the pictures I took as I was working on the puzzle and you see I was pretty much able to maintain a round shape at the beginning then all of a sudden it starts to get really wonky and that's what you see here and then you're gonna see something different when it gets to a point where I have to separate part of the puzzle because I completely lost the round shape and that should be coming up in this part right here there you go and then I decided okay we're gonna move this over to cardboard and that's what the this clip is right here and then after you see how I got part of it on the cardboard as I described in my video earlier you can see that now it's all on the cardboard and I worked on it until I completed it